what's up guys? Huawei's P20 and P20 Pro are heavy hitting phones, but now it's time for the light version. How does it hold up against the mid-range competition? We'll try to answer that as well as some of your questions from our unboxing video. I'm Will for GSM Arena, and this is our Huawei P20 Lite review. With its notched edge-to-edge -edge screen, the P20 Lite brings to mind much more expensive phones, like Huawei's own P20 Pro or the iPhone X. Our model is in Sakura Pink. We're not sure if the back is plastic or glass, but it feels nice, and we like the shiny highlights around the rear-mounted fingerprint reader and the dual camera. One thing we did notice is that there is a pretty big gap between the back and the frame, which could collect lint or dust over time. And needless to say, this phone isn't waterproof. It is quite lightweight though, and the raised edges on its metal frame give it a decent grip. We tried out the fingerprint reader. It's fast and responsive and always ready to wake up the phone. You can also use facial recognition to unlock the P20 Lite, and it works well. There's a notification LED too, so you know at a glance when to check your phone. On the left side, we have a hybrid slot which can be used to expand the 32 or 64 gigs of internal storage. For audio, there is a single bottom firing speaker next to the USB-C port. It's quite loud, even rivaling the speaker of the regular P20. You can also plug your headphones into the 3.5mm jack, and even listen to FM radio, both of which you can't do on the more expensive P20. The P20 Lite's screen is a 5.8 inch IPS LCD, with minimal bezels and a tall 19 by 9 aspect ratio. It has really deep blacks for an LCD, and the notch doesn't get in the way of content, which is nice. If you want, you can choose to hide the notch by turning the upper strip of the screen black. Unfortunately, although this display is pretty bright, at around 480 nits, sunlight legibility is not its strong point, barely average in our tests. The UI of the P20 Lite is Huawei's EMUI 8.0 over Android 8.0 Oreo. It runs pretty smoothly. It isn't nearly stock Android though. Huawei provides its own proprietary apps instead of relying on those from Google. You can choose between having apps on the home screen or in an app drawer, as well as change themes and transition effects. And updates will roll out according to Huawei's schedule, unlike phones in the Android One program. The P20 Lite has a Kirin 659 chipset and 4 gigs of RAM. It does a decent job, but the 659 has been around for about two years already. In benchmarks, it trails behind some of the newer mid-range competition, especially in graphics performance. But in the games we tried, we didn't notice any glaring issues, and the phone doesn't run too hot or throttle under stress. Battery-wise, the P20 Lite isn't a champion, but it does alright. Its 3000 mAh battery earned a 77 hour endurance rating in our proprietary tests. Our phone arrived with a fast charger, which may not be the same in all markets. When we plugged into charge, we had a mixed experience with the charging speed, getting between 19 and 30% in the first half hour. Charging the entire battery took anywhere between 2 and 3 hours. The P20 Lite has a dual camera setup. There's a 16 megapixel main cam with phase detection autofocus, and a 2 megapixel secondary cam which is only there to support bokeh mode. There is no Leica branding or black and white sensor unlike on the more expensive Huawei phones. In good light, the main cam does a nice job. Shots have great contrast, accurate colors, and above average dynamic range. There is some visible noise, but it doesn't get in the way. In low light, photos come out okay. There's little noise and colors come out fine, but a bit washed out. They're a little soft too. We were sort of disappointed with the camera's night mode though. It's nowhere near as magical as the P20s, and images come out dark and underexposed. The secondary cam provides depth information for variable aperture mode, which creates a defocused background behind the subject. It isn't as accurate as on Huawei's flagships, but it's usable. Portrait mode combines the variable aperture with beautification to enhance faces. Again, edge detection isn't perfect. There are sometimes traces of the background left sharp, or more often, some details end up missing from your subject. The 16 megapixel selfie cam is above average. Shots turn out fine, detailed and with pleasing colors. We made a comparison in low light too, and it does better here than a lot of the competition. You can also take selfie portraits. The algorithm does okay, but there are noticeable artifacts here and there. For videos, the P20 Lite can only record in 1080p at 30fps, and there is no stabilization. We expected more at this price range. Quality-wise, it has average sharpness and dynamic range, though the colors and contrast are good and noise is kept low. So, the Huawei P20 Lite. It looks quite similar to its flagship counterparts at first glance, and besides the nice build, it has a decent camera and an edge-to-edge -edge screen that looks good when it's not in the sun. It does have a few drawbacks though. 
The Kirin 659 isn't the newest chipset around, and bokeh mode and video recording leave more to be desired. If you love the design, there's no reason not to buy it, but for 300 euros, there's some good phones out there that can give you better value. Thanks for watching. Hit like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. You can always stop by gsmarina.com for our full test findings. See ya!